Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Mike Mataraki, with JoJo Electro Clothing, back for another JoJo Electro News Vlog. <clears throat> so, sorry, it's been about two or three weeks um, in between moving and work and married life and getting all of our chores done. Um, I've had to put the news vlogging on hold the last couple of weeks, so I apologize. Um, so anyhow, I was, what I'd like to do is, as some of you know, is I like to, as news comes in, I like to, um, read it, comment on it and, uh, present it to you guys if, if it makes sense or it seems really interesting. And so, um, as you might know, Jojo Electro Clothing is who sponsors this vlog. Let me put them up on the screen here. One second. So Jojo Electro is our website, and it's the only dance music merchandise website on the internet that I've ever been made aware of that covers only electronic dance music and all the different genres of it. What I mean by that is break beats, new disco, trap, drum and bass, techno, trance, deep house. Uh, what did I miss? Uh, techno, I guess, EDM, I already said new disco, uh, drum and bass, etc., etc. So check us out at jojoelectro.com. Some of the best sellers, blah, blah, blah. Oh, by the way, hats made out of uh, pages of DJ Magazine, laminated and sewn together, all one of a kind. Really interesting concept, hats and wallets. Anyhow, um, getting back to news, which is what I wanted to come here for. Getting back to news, I found this article that actually took a cynical view on electronic dance music or EDM. And I wanted to share it with you guys because I thought it was a, an interesting viewpoint. And uh, it's probably different than a lot of ours, but it's still good to present opposing viewpoints. So let me find this article for you real quick. One sec. All right. So electronic dance music is not for rebels, this article says. It's for tyrants and drones. EDM DJs rarely succumb to drug, death, and misadventure. They just turn up, do their thing, and get paid like the cynical corporate shills they are. All right. This person obviously is not a fan of electronic dance music. I'm not a huge fan of EDM. I got into house music and deep house probably 25, 30, maybe 25 years ago. Started playing records. Um, and so a lot of the younger people don't know that EDM is not house music and house music is not techno and so on and so forth. But for those of you that do know what EDM is and like it or dislike it, this article is still going to be interesting for you. So electronic dance music is dying. You may not have noticed it may, sorry, let me, let me fix something here. You may not have noticed it may not affect you directly, but it's a really big thing. And unless your teenage children have already told you, then you heard it here first. In fact, your teenage children are probably still in denial about it. So go and tell them. Get them back for scratching the car or vaping in the kitchen or whatever pitiful infractions pass for rebellion these days. Tell them, sorry, but electronic dance music is dying. Your rave is going to its grave. Ibiza now events, Ibiza now exerts the same cultural pull as any other barren 220 square mile island, including the Isle of Man. The DJ has been hung, not by Morrissey, as some of us hoped, but by his own corporate greed. All right, this person is not a fan of DJs. That's clear, or at least EDM DJs. I'm trying to figure it out. Yes, for music that goes bleep, bleep, bong, 2016 is like 1977 was for disco or 80 for punk. Only the diehards will stay to fight. I like to think that my young children can now grow up in a DJ less world, but alas, this will not happen. 
For unlike any other youth cultures, EDM, as it's called, is adaptable. It mutates like a flu. It will be back, bigger and more god-awful than ever. And so there will be new DJs, more DJs. And in case you hadn't noticed, there was already a plague of DJs. Last year, there were festivals featuring 300 DJs, all jumping up and down with one headphone can pressed against an ear and jabbing a finger at the heaven in the belief that they belong up there. No, the EDM collapse and 2016 summer of anything but love will be a mere hiatus, but it gives us a chance to ask ourselves, why do we tolerate these people? If you care, the dance music scene is collapsing because like an old sun, it got too massive. SFX Entertainment, which ran dozens of DJ festivals and dance events, went bankrupt in February. The paychecks demanded by superstar DJs, the top 10, by the way, made $268 million between them as in the zenith year of 2014. They were such that the genre couldn't suck in enough new fans to pay the wages and the whole thing collapsed like a piled up Ponzi scheme. A lot of people died from drugs too, but that's not going to put our children off wanting a starter set of decks from Maplin. If we're to put kids off, who's Maplin, by the way? I have, I have Pioneer equipment. I've heard of uh, several other monstrous brands, but I have not heard of Maplin. Anyhow, maybe I'm out of the loop. If we're to put our kids off, DJs, we need to tell them the truth. Disc jockeying was invented by a mad pedophile during austerity, and since then it has only become more grittily unpleasant. This, this writer is good, even though I don't agree with their disdain for our scene. But There was a point in the early 90s when the DJ became beautified. Beatified, I'm sorry. No longer did the term conjure thoughts of some local entrepreneur with a record collection fielding requests from a drunken hen party. Suddenly, the hard graft DJing was only for freaks and weirdos. The DJ kids aspired to was no longer someone in the midst of the dancing, but someone on a platform, on a balcony, these days halfway up in the sodding sky where they relay, relay their musical mana in a state of unassailable self-appointed pomp. For decades, different movements, rock, punk, electronica, indie, had worked to the same iconoclastic end. Tear down the barriers, make the whole venue a stage, get as close as you can to the people. Cheap electronics, computers, and home studios had promised us the greatest ever revolution in the musical democracy. And then suddenly we had pricks and puffa jackets way up there in the artificial clouds behaving like pilled up Elmer gantries. This writer must be from Europe, I'm guessing. Anyhow, DJing has always been about drugs, but also about control. Back in my youth, the drugs were sold by the DJs, some of them now millionaires, and their baseball-capped cohort. The fact that it was a truck shop monopoly was bad enough, but what made it worse was that everyone would have their own stuff confiscated with the explanation that the DJ wanted everyone, quote-unquote, on the same wave, or, quote-unquote, to keep the vibe crunchy, or some such rubbish. We were entreated not to have a good time necessarily, but to have exact the exact sort of time some guy with a messiah complex wanted us to have. We were legion. They were few. But which of us was going to fight this tyranny? Nobody who hugs sweaty strangers is going to fight tyranny. These days, the DJs are too wealthy and too busy to sell people drugs. But all that's really changed is that the new layers and middle managers have been added to the narco corpus model. It's funny, I knew several DJs that had Ziploc bags at their feet. One for money and one for whatever else they were selling. I'm not going to name names, obviously. If DJing is still cool, it's hardly progressive. In most entertainment fields, acting and comedy, certainly, the inclusion and importance of women is constantly addressed and reassessed. But there are as many women in the top flight of EDM as there were in the gangster rap scene, and the imagery with which the culture sells itself has almost as many bikinis, boobs, and butt cheeks. But it's the sheer cynicism that's so off-putting, so contrary to the vital, guileless impulse of youth. Deaths in Las Vegas, Kuala Lumpur, and Buenos Aires have 
resulted in cancel events and increased drug searches. The industry reacted. Concerning five deaths in Manila, where he'd played, DJ Matthew Coma explained that he enjoyed the music without drink or drugs, and others should too. SFX Music Events boss Richie McNeil said after two deaths at one of his festivals that he was sick of seeing festival organizers being blamed for the idiot, stupid behavior of narrow-minded individuals that are taking poison. Nobody is responsible for anyone else's behavior, but let's address the elephant in the disco. This music is unlistenable without drugs unless you've had a lobotomy or you're six years old. <laughs> this writer's funny. Go on to YouTube and find Canadian superstar Dead Mouse playing his big room version of Old MacDonald Had a Farm. And then tell me that you could listen to this without help. Help being drugs, I would imagine. If my children one day insist on seeing a superstar DJ, I'll tell them, for God's sake, take plenty of drugs. As, as long as there are DJs, we will also need drugs. And people will die. Not from heat stroke or dehydration or heart attacks. That's just detail. But from trying to cut off that part of their brain that knows the music as bullocks. This, this writer is definitely English. I love it. That's not to say I don't believe DJs can be clean living. I'm sure most of them are. Because compared with their peers in rock, rap, heavy metal, whatever, DJs have remarkably low rates of wastage where drug death and misadventure is concerned. They don't tend to choke on their own vomit or drive Rolls Royces into swimming pools like Keith Moon or even run themselves over with their own Mercedes and Walthman Stowe like Brian Harvey did. They mostly just turn up, do their thing, and get paid like the cynical corporate shills they are. This is not music for rebel rebels. It's for tyrants and drones. And Liam Malone is a writer and comedian who spent his school days in Hong Kong as the only punk on the colony. I love it. All right, Liam, I agree to you with a lot of what you said, actually. But that was a good article. I wanted to present some counter, some counter argument to what uh, most of us actually like, whether it's EDM or different genres of electronic dance music. Anyhow, that's the JoJo ne Electro News Log for this week. Check us out at JoJoElectro.com and write me here on Facebook or on YouTube and let me know what you'd like to hear, see, or even what designs you'd like to see maybe added to our website. All right, take care. Bye-bye.